You may already know this, but if you don't, dogs are the genetic descendants of the gray wolf. Dogs may have descended from the gray wolves that we know today, and it's just a little, you know, niche offshoot, or they could have descended from an extinct gray wolf species, and dogs are what remain. I think the genetic evidence leans more towards the latter. Dogs are in the genus Canis, meaning dog, and then they're also known as Canis lupus, which is the gray wolf. It actually means dog wolf. And then dogs are also called Canis lupus familiaris. That's their subspecies name. And it literally translates to dog wolf friendly. So it could be the friendly wolf. Let's put it that way. Much like my sex life, Latin is dead, so I don't really know exactly what it translates to, but we'll, we'll go with that. Now, it may seem hard to believe, because how could a Chihuahua and a like, you know, Great Dane be the same animal? Well, they are, and that's due to evolution. Canids first appear in the Eocene, which is about 56 to 33 million years ago. The genus Canis doesn't really come about until the Pliocene, which is about 5 to 2 million years ago. For context, hominids have been around for a while, since the Pliocene and the Miocene. However, Modern humans, like we are today, didn't come about until the Pleistocene, so we're new. Now this number changes a lot, it might change tomorrow after this video comes out, but there's upwards of 38 subspecies of wolves. That's timber wolves, red wolves, gray wolves, and dogs. And shake. Wolves are the largest of the living canids. Uh, the dire wolf was larger, and it wasn't Game of Thrones larger, it was just a little more robust than modern gray wolves. If you want to learn more about dire wolves, you should head over to PBS Eons. They got some good stuff on that. And wolves are distinct from the other canids in the sense that they, they have a distinct dental morphology, a distinct cranial morphology, and they have a very specific set of behavioral traits. Wolves, as you probably know, live in complex social groups called packs. And packs usually consist of two to four families of wolves. And the basic family unit of a wolf is kind of like a nuclear family, and it's a male, a female, and their various offspring. It's not nuclear in the sense of 1950s America, it's nuclear in the sense that the mother and father stick around and care for the young. This also leads people to believe that wolves are monogamous. Monogamy is not that common in the animal kingdom, so it's very interesting. And when I say monogamy, I mean it in the way that the male and female stick around to raise the pups together. An interesting thing that I see a lot in the literature is that alpha males are more of a captivity thing. It's not really that common in the wild. Take that with a grain of salt, I don't actually know for sure. I don't study wolf behavior. However, the outcast or the, the lone wolves of the wolf world are a real thing. That's a natural phenomenon. Wolves that compete for dominance and lose have to go find another pack or do their own thing for a while. I know I'm going really fast, but just keep in mind the complex social groups and the outcasts. That'll come back. Wolves, like humans, are ruthlessly efficient pack hunters. Now, it can be argued that bears and felines stay at the top of the food chain, but bears are kind of solitary foragers. They eat fish, they eat berries, or they'll kill a deer once in a while. Cats usually hunt at night. Um, only in the Pleistocene in Africa did they have, you know, prides. Uh, now, there's not really a lot of prides running around northern Eurasia or North America. It's just smaller felines like bobcats and lynx and cougars and mountain lions and jaguars that do their thing, but they do it kind of alone. What makes the wolf so deadly, in addition to its intelligence, is its teeth, its stamina, and its strength. Wolves chase animals down as persistence hunters, and persistence hunters is also known as a courser. This means that they chase their prey until it collapses from exhaustion. We do this too. If you've ever seen a documentary of wolves hunting, it's mesmerizing, right? You can see the wolf running behind the animal very quickly, and the animal struggling to keep running. Another wolf will come in and tag the other one out. Not really, they don't slap paws or anything, but the one that's been running will stop to pant and another one comes. Or they could be doing it as a whole group and they just keep scaring the animal or corral it. It's really cool to watch. You should check it out on any kind of documentary. They're also known to flank animals. So one will be running at an animal and stay there. Another one will come from the left or the right and get it from the side. That might seem familiar. Clever girl. Humans do the same thing. We're also persistence hunters. And while wolves and other animals have to stop to pant, there's no other way for them to expel heat other than to just stop and go <sighs> to get that air in and out to, to cool them down. Humans don't really have to pant. We do if we're really out of shape or eventually but we like sprint so hard that we have to stop. But we can keep running and running and running and running. And why is that? Well, it's because we're hairless and we perspire. We don't have to stop to pant and regulate all that air coming in and out of us. That helps but also our heat is expelled through our skin in the form of sweat. We keep the hair on our head to protect us from sun, I guess is one of the reasons why we have hair. And the rest of our body is kind of, well, we got pubes. The rest of our body is able to expel heat very fast. So we can keep running and running and running and we can drink while we're running, we can eat while we're running and it, we just keep going. One tangent later. This is a dog, but think about it as a wolf for right now. 
Wolves have the dental osteology that has in the front these big long canines that trap things and in the back of their mouth they have these things called carnassials that crush bone. If you've ever seen a documentary of a wolf attacking something or you've seen a dog attack something, it'll first grab with its canines and incisors to, you know, latch down on an animal. When they chew bones later though, they use it in the back to crush bone. If you've seen your dog chew on something, that's what it's doing. It's chewing it in the back of its mouth with its last premolar and its first molar and just crushing the bone to get the marrow out. It's pretty dope, but you should also know that hyenas are way better at doing that. Imagine a cave hyena. I wouldn't want to. For those of you that are more into cats, let me explain this. Cats live in Felidae. They're also carnivores that are very similarly related to the wolf, dog, canid kind of family. They are evolved to silently stalk, lunge, and pounce on animals, and they also have carnassials in the back of their mouth that are used to shear. So if you can think of a cat going up on an animal or a rabbit or a squirrel or something, it uses its teeth to just shear, to either its spinal cord or its jugular to sever. Cats are, cats are metal. It's pretty cool. You might also wonder what did cats evolve from? Well, they evolved from Felis sylvestris libica or Felis sylvestris africanus. That is the, the African wildcat or the Middle Eastern wildcat. When humans kind of stopped hunting and gathering so much, they eventually settled down and started, you know, storing grain all the time because that's the food they could, they could grow food and they had to store it. You have discovered agriculture. But when you have a lot of food that's sitting in there rotting in a granary, you're gonna get a lot of mice. And cats come out of nowhere and they're like, oh, I can eat all these mice. It's abundant. These people are idiots. They just let mice into their homes. Now cats, it's debated, aren't domesticated. They're a little more docile than their wild counterparts, but they're more or less not domesticated. Cats kind of just occupy human homes and deal with it. Now cats like to be pet too, but they'll also just not give a shit about you too at the same time and they'll just walk away. They're possibly wild animals. I think they're a little more domesticated than we give them credit for, but you get the point. You may hear people refer to animals as killing machines, usually in reference to, to wolves or dogs. Well, if you've ever noticed your dog rip apart something as a puppy, where'd you get a pigeon? It's because it's in their DNA. You can suppress it with training eventually, or they kind of grow out of it, but there's a, they have an innate need to just tear it up. Let's move on to dog domestication theories. There are two sets of dog domestication theories, the natural selection theories and the artificial selection theories. And let me explain a little bit about natural se- What the f Hello there. Obi-Wan? Uh, no, uh, I'm Charles Darwin. You, you literally just mentioned natural selection. Why would Obi-Wan Kenobi show up? Well, Disney owns Star Wars now, so anything's possible. Oh, really? Well, that's a damn shame. Plus, you're a force ghost. And no, I'm, I'm a science ghost, not a force ghost. There's, there's a difference. Mm. I can live with that. Can you explain the gist of natural selection while I go to the bathroom? I really gotta pee. I've been talking a while. Yeah, sure. What, what's it like using flushable toilets? Um, awesome, I guess? I don't know. <sighs> I can only imagine. Must be so nice. All right, let's talk evolution. On my tour around the world on the HMS Beagle, I took me to the Galapagos Islands, which I noticed on smaller islands were finches that had different environmental niches among them. Long story short, what I discovered was that organisms must compete with one another in order to secure resources, find mates, and survive. And as we found out later, pass on their genetic material, also known as DNA. And what I discovered on the Galapagos Islands was that organisms slowly develop adaptations which help them secure resources, help them survive, and pass on their genes. This, in essence, is natural selection, and this is evolution. If you want to learn more on that, you can check out my books. I have several, obviously, but you can check out David's channel. But I also, I, I must go. I must play chess with uh, Alexander the Great soon, and I also, I met Steve Irwin last week. Great chap! Uh, we are going to get pissed drunk and watch Animal Planet later. Sounds like a great time, so I must go. Uh, goodbye, guys. I will, I will see you later. Darwin? Hello? Darwin? Well, that checks out. Oh, better tell my therapist I'm seeing ghosts now. Probably get expensive. Alright, that's the end of that video. Thank you so much for following me. This like this means a lot to me. It's actually like means the world to me. If you're coming from Stefan's video, so happy to have you. Let's do this. It's gonna be a good time. Uh, if you're coming from Reddit, uh, you probably saw like the little skits that I do. Those are for TikTok, but I've been putting them on YouTube. 
I'm gonna incorporate those into my bigger videos. Uh, let me know what videos you would want to see next. Put them down here in the comments. Uh, the second half of this video is gonna be on Stefan Milo's channel. Go check that out. But yes, yeah, stay here if you want to see more of these scenes. Uh, gonna be more episodic stuff, gonna do more short film things and specific topics. The next videos are going to be prehistoric art and prehistoric music. So if you're still, if you want to come for that, I'll do the little short ones, but I'll also do the long ones too. So you get to see a whole bunch of new stuff. If you can do me a favor, go ahead and follow my friends Dig It With Raven. She's an archeologist and you can also visit Behind The Trowel, uh, Natasha Bilson. Great channels, give them a follow. In the meantime, check my Instagram out. I am on TikTok as David Ian Howe. Instagram is Ethnosynology. And just please share the shit out of these videos because uh, I'm trying to make this my job. So, all right, peace.